go. <laughs> oh my goodness. Six days with you friends. Oh my goodness. It's just been quite a journey. Such, such a journey, such, uh, such energy, time, talent. We are so fortunate to have been able to spend this time with you. But I'd like to, I'd like to just uh, roll it back a bit and share some thoughts with you here. So if we go back just a little bit, on January 28th of 2020, several of our consortium colleagues, Anita and I, um, attended the second annual Disaster Preparedness Summit hosted by the American Red Cross in Washington, DC. The summit brought us together to discuss the disaster risks we face in the region. We explored the impacts that a significant disaster would have on our regional infrastructure and critical systems, such as communications, transportation, and healthcare. The question was posed, how ready are we? <coughs> happens, it happens when you're live. On March 30th, 2020, the president declared a nationwide emergency. FEMA was directed to assist state, local, and other entities with health and safety actions. We've been supporting that. Actions we perform on a daily basis are in response to that. The FEMA courses, the independent study courses, and the NIMS framework provide the structure for us to operate in and is the national standard. So let's take a step back from that. In Fairfax County, we have 1.2 million residents, 399 square miles, over 160 languages spoken here. Then in the National Capital Region, 5.5 million residents, 24 jurisdictions, and three branches of federal government centered here. What happens here and how we respond to it affects the world. But, in Fairfax, we knew we weren't facing this alone. Leveraging the relationships developed over time, a consortium emerged. And as our program leaders shared updates, ideas, and resources, um, it was just absolutely invaluable. We had um, opened communication channels. We had regular meetings. They were established, and it gave us the opportunity to work more closely together. We quickly shifted our focus from planning CERTCON 2020, the 10th anniversary, into CERTCON 2021, the 10th anniversary. Um, but, but we also used that time to, to really talk about how the CERTs in each of our individual areas um, were doing good work to help our communities and to help themselves during this global pandemic. At this opportunity, we'd like to take some time to introduce Greg St. James, the president of the National Capital Region CERT Consortium. Greg? Well, thank you, Missy. I'm going to uh, give you, a, I'm wearing two hats today, one of which um, from Montgomery County as the program uh, manager of the Montgomery County CERT team. So I'm gonna talk about that a little bit and then segue into this consortium, which may be something you have not heard about yet, but we'll tell you a little bit about it. But I'm gonna start, if you're gonna allow me to just share my screen for a second here, let me see if I can make this work. And I want to show you if you um, are not familiar uh, with a little bit of the history, if I can give you a quick history lesson here. In 20, uh, well, really starting in 2010, I had the idea, hey, you know, it'd be nice to meet some of the other certs around here. Maybe they could help me figure out how to do this stuff and learn things and I could ask them questions. So that discussion, which I had with my then boss, who was the division chief for um, Montgomery County Fire Rescue Division of Volunteer Services, Chief Alan Hine, so I met at Rockville when I was riding um, EMS calls there, and he somehow talked me one night sitting around the day room table into taking a job with him at the county to run some kind of program. And I'm not entirely sure I knew what it was, but I trusted Alan. So I said, hey, okay. Next thing I knew, I'm running a CERT program. And a little bit after I started doing that, I said, boy, you know, we really need to compare notes because we're all out here doing our own thing. So Alan was the first um, person who really understood what we were trying to do as a NCR group, as a group of CERT programs, and supported the notion of sharing 
um, uh, our knowledge and our skills and our strengths and our abilities and creating the very first CertCon, which he uh, was kind enough to speak at and support us with some funding. Alan Hind, Chief Hind passed away this past March after a, a battle with pancreatic cancer. So we've asked and uh, we asked uh, in the planning stage if we could dedicate this year's CertCon to his memory. And so I would ask you uh, somewhere along the way uh, tonight, take a moment and think about Chief Hine and think about all of those who serve in, in uh, uniform services, fire rescue, police, EMS, our military. Remember those that aren't home with their family tonight, if you would. Um, let me say a couple of things about what we've done in Montgomery County, because we're gonna then kind of go around the horn here in our little um, Hollywood squares that we're playing. I will tell you that I'm, I'm immensely proud of our team. Uh, we've overcome, as has everyone here, uh, the challenge of trying to figure out how to present this program during a time of COVID. So our training team led by David Steele and Brett, who's just been amazing. Some of you met Brett, Kathy Henning and Joan and Kay, um, worked really, really hard to translate a FEMA curriculum into an online curriculum. Then we had to redo it when FEMA changed the curriculum and it would have been able to present um, uh, online CERT training uh, and learning a lot from some of the other programs too, how you all have done it. So I'm proud of our team, proud of our team. Uh, we've had a COVID task force, uh, which we started a year ago. And of course we've been out and I see Bob Mark is on the call with us here. Bob, put that drink down for a second and say hello. I see you drinking grape juice. I hope it's grape juice, sir. Um, and uh, Bob has been out most days of the week running our, uh, helping him and uh, our volunteer, Rachel, been out running our mobility transport, the Germantown Mass Vaccination Clinic, rain and shine for the last month. Uh, we've had people out doing vaccination clinics. So Montgomery County, really um, very proud of our team and, and of our volunteers. But here's what we also have done. And, and the wonderful thing about having a National Capital Region Consortium, which is a, a group of participating certs and we share, and we, we've met weekly and then bi-weekly, now monthly. We formed a 501c3, so we've got a vehicle we're building so we can do something, which I will announce now, and that will be host next year's CERTCon 2022 will be hosted by the National Capital Region CERT Consortium. Um, so we're looking for funding, hint, hint, but we will be working together on that. And that has been a chance, and it's been all these conversations over the years. I remember sitting uh, at a CERT conference in California in 2016 with Missy and sitting somewhere on Hollywood Boulevard talking about CERT kind, you know? People say, like, what are you doing out there? Well, we're talking about CERT. Um, and this is um, really, uh, I think, the direction that more and more regions are going in. There are strength in numbers. We can share. Uh, we don't have to stovepipe. We don't all have to reinvent the wheel ourselves. So CERT kind is, is a wonderful example of that. And with that being said, what we do at all of our our NCR meetings, our National Capital Region CERT Consortium meetings, Francis, our wonderful, wonderful person from Washington, D.C., calls the role, and she calls the different CERTs to report on what they're doing. So, Francis, once again, I will call on you from an undisclosed location somewhere near a beach, we believe. Um, and last time I checked, there's not a lot of beach property in D.C. Francis will uh, call the role. Francis. Good evening, everyone. We will start with Marjorie, who's out of Alexandria. Hi, I'm Marjorie Wendelberg, Alexandria, Virginia, sir. It's the city of Alexandria. I'm the coordinator. And uh, let me tell you that Alexandria is a small jurisdiction in the National Capital Region. It's just 15 square miles, uh, 160,000 people, unlike uh, Missy's great state of Fairfax, as we like to refer to our neighbors to the south and west. So, um, Alexandria's cert basically went into cardiac arrest in 2014 and nearly died. So we've been in rebuilding mode. Um, and the progress that we have made in 2018, we graduated just 10 people from CERT basic training. In 2019, from the two classes that we held for CERT basic training, we graduated 23. Last year, we graduated 29 people, and we've only held one class on CERT basic training so far this year, and we graduated 23 people just a month ago. So we are growing, we are um, coming back. 
the other thing that I want to talk about is the contributions that Alexandria CERT has made um, in conjunction with the Alexandria Health Department and Medical Reserve Corps in supporting the COVID vaccination clinics since December 2020. As of um, Saturday, just yesterday, we had 2,237 hours of contributions from the CERT um, staff. There are 20 people or so who form a dedicated core along with occasional onesie twosies that show up and provide support. They play all sorts of roles, uh, flow management, registration, logistics, biosafety, vaccinator assistant, we even have one vaccinator, and one person who is the entire clinic manager. And in the picture that you see, she's the tallest person in that picture. I was the shortest person in the picture, okay? So um, that's what we've been doing is just working real hard at supporting uh, COVID vaccination clinics. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marjorie. We will now go to Shasta with Arlington. Hi, I'm Shasta Petakovas. I'm the Communications uh, Outreach Coordinator and the Engagement Liaison for uh, Arlington CERT in Arlington, Virginia. The Arlington CERT was started back on 10 September 2002, one day short of the one year anniversary of 9-11. Our foundation is on the principle that no one knows what will happen tomorrow. Since 2002, we have been learning to be better prepared and to help our neighbors be better prepared. Because again, no one knows what will happen tomorrow. During this unprecedented time, since our first COVID activation on 21 May, 2020, the Ellington CERT has been called on for 12 activations for food distributions, COVID testing, and now vaccination sites. Many activations want multiple phases. And we have been given thousands of hours of volunteer effort to increase the resilience of Arlington County and the region. The NCR CERTs have been very generous with time and knowledge, helping the Arlington CERT to improve. And we are very grateful for the team spirit and the generosity that they have shown. We just completed our second Spanish language CERT basic training. The previous iteration of Spanish language CERT basic training was in 2004. If we have enough interest from the Spanish language community, we hope to continue it. We have also expanded our outreach to persons with differing abilities, because we all know that CERTs have a place for a huge range of abilities. Thanks to all of you in the CERT world, you are truly our teammates. Thank you. Thank you. We will now go to Anne Arundel, Annapolis CERT with Paul. Hi, good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for inviting us. Um, Anne Arundel Annapolis CERT was very similar to what Marjorie was talking about. In 2014, we were almost dead. And it wasn't because of the lack of interest from the county. It was because of the lack of funding. Mm -hmm. So our team went forward in 2015 to form uh, as a 501c3. That's a mouthful. Uh, and kind of got us back on the track. We started, and when we actually formed as a 501c3 in 2015, we only had eight people. And we have grown from eight people now to about uh, 77 uh, active members. We have others on the roster which are not active uh, and are do not deploy. But at the time, uh, you know, we've, we've grown quite a bit. We we hold our, our classes uh, generally for a year. We've been able to do three in-person classes during the COVID, graduating uh, 28 people. Uh, OEM, uh, we you were using their space, restricted us to uh, eight people per class. During the COVID uh, uh, pandemic, we started out with working with the Donation Management Center. Uh, uh, providing traffic assistance and help up there. Uh, we then moved over to, and I started helping with food distribution, the food bank. Uh, we were working, having people there almost daily uh, at the Annapolis food, or the, I'm sorry, the Anne Arundel food bank, not the Maryland food bank. OEM was using us as call takers in the emergency operations center, uh, call takers and call taker supervisors on the weekend. The city of Annapolis then reached out for us to be safety ambassadors when they were opening 
the restaurants downtown and putting them out into the street, closing the streets and allowing them to open up uh, the restaurants in the streets. And we provided traffic support uh, for many of the clinics and worked in the clinics as well. Uh, we work along with the Anne Arundel uh, County Police Department for the traffic uh, or the, uh, some of the uh, volunteer organizations. So we've also continued our monthly training uh, during this time. And I would invite anyone on the call, if you're interested in monthly training, get back to your leads with your organizations because we send out invites every month to the leads. So thank you for having us and um, great presentation, everyone. I, I enjoyed CertCon, although work has kept me quite busy. So thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, again, so I will be speaking on the behalf of DC. My name is Frances Whalen. Um, I've been a CERT member since 2013, and I caught the bug, and I have just made so many friends and family in my CERT family. Um, for those of you who know how amazing CERT is, I was able to uh, get a job under DC Homeland Security and Emergency Management from the bug I caught just by taking CERT classes and other emergency management classes in the region. So CERT is just the foundation for me, and I enjoy it so much. So for DC CERT, we will continue to provide vital emergency preparedness and training and information to our residents. Everything we do is centered around recruitment and retention. Right now, we are in the process of making our CERT groups for each ward. I am actually the lead for the Ward 7 group, which is in Northeast. Um, we have created teams by building preparedness and organizations in their communities during disasters. We have also created the following task force during COVID the Volunteer Reception Center, Training and Exercise Task Force, and also a Mass Care uh, Task Force to include shelter operations, POD, family reunification, and post-disaster canvassing. So we are busily moving in the nation's capital, and we just thank you guys for the opportunity. And as Paul was saying, we also put on webinars and other classes. So if you're interested, please reach out to your leads about more information. So next, we will be going to Fairfax. So I believe that will be Elvia, if you would like a few words. Thanks, Francis. Actually, we have Jeff with us, and so he's excited to share. Thanks. Good afternoon. <laughs> well, first, I want to echo Greg's comments about how without the consortium, none of this, this conference would not have been possible. It really took a community to put this event on. It's not just a Fairfax, it is a region-wide of wide event and i really hope that everyone has learned something from this conference that's the point of it all to continue learning never stop but look at i'm not sure missy will cover that later on so let's just talk about fairfax we've have a great team yeah the COVID hit and it's really slowed things down but we had great instructors and great volunteers who kept the program going virtually and when we did meet in person they met the rules but um just the bottom line is you now the program's you, whether it's Fairfax or any other jurisdiction, you're a great bunch of volunteers, you're all type A personalities who just want to keep things going, who want to help. And despite COVID, we kept on moving on. So let me tell you a little what's happening in Fairfax right now. I've kind of, it was always me and, of course, well, you can't see it because the screen's on, but me and Dana Powers, we've always run this program, but it's just grown way too big for us to manage. So we've created this little triangle of leadership. So we have the general CERT program. That's the CERT program everybody knows and loves. That's where we just teach people to protect themselves, their families, neighbors, and that's the training. Elvia Foyle, she's the lead for that program. She's kind of equivalent to a volunteer chief. She runs the upper management of the program that keeps it going. Then we have something called the CERT Association, the Fairfax County Volunteer, well, Fairfax County Association, whatever the proper name is. That's led by right now by Missy Tuttle. She she is now the president of that association. So that's two points in this triangle. So the association is now a nonprofit organization, and they'll help with fundraising because our USC grant has gone away. Fire and Rescue will support us a lot, but we will need some help from the association. Then we have this third arm, which is a CERT support group, which is going to be rolling out next week. 
We have a we have a new search support vehicle, the CGM as they call it, the search green machine, which is going to operate as a canteen unit, a training unit, and whatever else the group could think of. It's a great group of people running that. So we want to make sure those people are properly trained and insured. So they're going to have a little different insurance than the average cert. They're going to have additional training. And they're going to be Fairfax County volunteers. So that's called the CERT support group. So that's our triangle of the new CERT program. It's kind of like a volunteer fire department. It can't be a volunteer fire department but it's kind of kind of like one and our goal is to become the 13th department in fairfax county right now this is a combined fire department we have the career side and 12 volunteer companies these cert this these three points of the cert program and now our goal is to make them the 13th partner with fairfax county this will allow us to this just raises up the program another level and it makes some of the CERT volunteers part of the county where they'll have a county ID card, they'll have a proxy card, they'll have full access to the county stations and county facilities. It's all about making sure this program lives on into the future. Now, things happen, pandemics happen, finances come and go. The goal of all this and is to make sure that the program will survive, that any of us could go away and the program will, 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 will live on. So I, that's that's enough of me talking. I love the program. I love the volunteers. And without the volunteers, none of this would po be possible. Without the CERT consortium, these events would not be possible. So hopefully, hopefully everyone has learned something, and we'll see you at next year, whoever is holding that. So thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Greg, did you want a few more words from Montgomery County? I think we pretty much have covered it, except I did want to remind folks that, that and I put it in the chat, that we are planning, I don't have a date yet because we've been so um, behind the wheel with COVID. We are planning a field training exercise as those of you that have done CERTCOM before know there's always like a, uh, an actual field exercise. Obviously this year there isn't right now. There will be this fall, probably September, could slip to October. Uh, we wanna do it here at our training academy um, in Montgomery County. So we're working on that when we have something more firm We'll push that out to everybody that attended and, and all of your folks. So uh, just kind of keep that in, your, in mind, please. So we will get a chance to put our boots on and go play outside. Thank you, sir. So part of the consortium is also Prince George's County. And Prince George's County is pretty unique because we have some team players from different groups on the call today. So first, we're going to start with Alonzo with Greater Upper Marlboro. Thank you, Francis, and greetings to everybody. My name is Alonzo Joy. I'm the secretary of Greater Upper Marlboro CERT here in Prince George's County. As Francis alluded to, we are unique in that we have multiple CERTs throughout the county, independent, but we work together corporately to make things happen, to allow our communities to be more resilient today than they were yesterday. I would like to first start by saying, I commend the organizers of CERCON 2021 for providing an opportunity for CERT members to advance their knowledge, skills, and abilities so that collectively we can add to our community resiliency. That is absolutely important. And that is mission number one, bring our communities to a point where we can survive and come back stronger when severe incidents or disasters occur and do it in a safe manner. COVID has presented some challenges this year and last year, but we, you, have met the challenge as we reimagine, 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 one more time, reimagine CERCON 2021 within the virtual age. And I wanna thank each of you all for your dedication by participating in CERCON. Uh, again, my name is Alonzo Joy, Great Upper Marlboro CERT. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Now we will go to Brindisi with Greenbelt. Good afternoon, CERCON 2021. Thanks for listening to our little spiel. I am Brindisi from Greenbelt CERT. We are a even smaller municipality. Um, 
We have 29,000 people and cover all of six and a half square miles and are located in Prince George's County, right outside the DC Beltway. So we wanted to start with a little bit of history that I dug up on Prince George's County. We started our CERT teams in 2004. We are under the Office of Emergency Management, uh, Office of Homeland Security of the county. And we have a little less than 10 CERT programs within the 27 municipalities located in our county. Uh, so yeah, that's just us. So Alonzo is from Greater Upper Marlboro, Marlboro CERT. I'm from Greenbelt. And we have been so busy during the pandemic and we love it. We have, um, about 20 to 30 active people in our team. And we've been busy with the Green Belt Farmers Market, helping people socially distance and keep safe with their masks on. We've been helping at the Green Belt uh, FEMA Vaccination Center, uh, volunteering, helping observe people and, and wayfinding. Uh, we also have our volunteers out at World Central Kitchen, helping prep food as well as distributing. Uh, not only that, but we've had uh, people at our county food drives, uh, shopping for the elderly, meals on wheels, emergency preparedness bag stuffings. And one of the most important things that we've done is activate our phone tree so that we can reach out to our team members and others who may be feeling lonely in this time uh, or this time of stay at home or shelter in place. So we are um, we have had virtual trainings with storm reports, emergency hygiene, and upcoming, we're going to have uh, Maryland uh, insurance, uh, what to do, uh, know about your insurance for the storms. And we are proud to partner with Montgomery County's virtual emergency response team in their artificial intelligence social media sentiment projects, as well as their winter storm reports. Uh, we also wanted to thank our partners who have helped us out and pitched in when we didn't have enough people for our activities. Uh, Anne Arundel, Annapolis CERT, Montgomery County, CERT teams from Clinton, Mount Rainier, Greater Upper Marlboro CERT, and even Stone Creek CERT from Ocala, Florida. I know that's a long drive for them, but hey. Um, <laughs> and I wanted to give my heartiest thanks to the wonderful organizers of CERTCON 2021. Hooray, you did a great job. Uh, I organized this in 2017. I know how hard it is and you made it work virtually. So huzzah to you guys. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. And lastly, we will be speaking to Paula, who is the president of South County, but she will also be representing Fort Washington CERT. Uh, my name is Paula Hughes. I am the president of South County CERT and the vice president of Fort Washington CERT. We have our CERT teams are at District 4 Police Station and District 7 Police Station. And they're both right off of Route 201, which runs in the southern part of the county. So if you're in the National Capital Region, for reference, it runs from National Harbor all the way down to Charles County. OK, so due to COVID, we've been meeting, having our general meetings virtually. Uh, we've also been doing happy hours because we don't always need to talk about CERT and emergency management and the gray skies. We want to do some blue sky stuff, some good things. So we talk about cicadas, uh, politics. Yes, politics, um, spiritual care, snakes. We just do a lot of that. Right. Uh, we are also hosting virtual classes. So upcoming in the next two months, three months, we have a virtual tabletop for CERT disaster response. We have a Narcan training with the Department of Health, and we have a presentation on chemically assisted suicide. So we're also having an in-person CPR, AED, and first aid training because due to COVID and without being in person last year, most of our CPR certificates have expired. So we need to get that done, but that will be in person. So we're also looking forward towards professionalizing, further professionalizing and branding our team. So can you see our very nice South County CERT shirts? The only difference is Fort Washington has the, uh, will be yellow and it'll of course say um, Fort Washington. So in ending, because 
we're always last, so I'm running out of time. I would like to say, and I put this in the chat already, if you're looking for your local CERT team in the continental United States, I don't know about overseas, you can search for it at www.fema.gov forward slash CERT and type it um, in by zip code. So that's all I have to say about South County and Fort Washington. Um, very glad to be here. This was an excellent, excellent conference. And I'm just tickled, tickled orange, orange, our colors. All right, and um, over. Thank you so much, ma'am. And I'm gonna turn it back over to Missy. Thank you so much. And I'm gonna turn it over to my wonder twin, Anita. Wow. I'm going to share some numbers with you. Over the past six days, over 300 participants. <laughs> over 40 hours worth of content and multiple international participants. That exceeded our wildest dreams when we set our goals. One more number. These recordings, including this one, will be available for 30 days. All of these numbers <laughs> and all of this hard work, which is done with an army of volunteers, um, is why we are celebrating you, the Everyday Cert. During these unique times, you have been the calm in the storm. You have not only taken care of your yourselves, your families. You have reached out to your communities with leadership, with confidence, with compassion. While the world had to figure out how to and when to wear gloves and masks, you were prepared with emergency supplies. You were trained in proper donning and doffing of PPE, and you were equipped to apply those skills in the right situations at the right times. While your neighbors we're running out of toilet paper and box meals. You were prepared. You were making masks, de delivering meals, volunteering your time and talents to the needs of your communities, your neighborhoods. Being a cert is not the shirt. It's who you are at all times. It shows in the instinct each one of us has to help others without expecting anything in return. It is the way we process our surroundings that allows us to quickly adapt to changing situations in our desire to continually refine our skills and knowledge, as well as our need to grow beyond, beyond our comfort zone. Being a cert is who you are, not the role you play when needed. That is what makes you worth celebrating. You, the everyday cert. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'm not done. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you for giving us the privilege of celebrating you, the Everyday CERT. <laughs> CERTCON 2021, out. out.